Hello everyone, I'm your host Rich Hagen, welcoming you to another episode of Inside R&D, coming to you from Renton, Washington, the home of Wizards of the Coast. You know, Oath of the Gatewatch is a set that's all about teamwork, and what an amazing team Wizards have assembled. Let's meet them. Oath of the Gatewatch is an important story moment. This is the moment when these four planeswalkers, Gideon, Jace, Chandra, and Nyssa, form a superhero team called the Gatewatch. They are going to defend the multiverse from threats and they swear an oath. And this is it. This is the, the, the moment when the team is formed. So like we named the set after that. We made cards about it. We have cards that refer to Planeswalkers, more cards that refer to Planeswalkers than any other set. We are trying to emphasize that this is important. This is happening now and you should pay attention to it. Gideon had set out to save Zendikar, and he, uh, back before they got there, he had looked for other planeswalkers to help him. He didn't have much luck the first time, but by the time we meet them in Oath of the Gatewatch, there are four planeswalkers, and they all do want to save Zendikar. However, Gideon has a larger idea of what they could do, and that is to protect the multiverse from multiverse-level threats, like the Eldrazi. Uh, so Gideon says, let's do this. Let's all right now take an oath and promise that we will stand guard against the multiverse. We're planeswalkers, we can do that. For him, it's easy. Then there's Jace, uh, the mind mage. He and Gideon are uh, in agreement about what needs to be done and virtually never in agreement about how to do it. Uh, Gideon thinks uh, very, on a very personal scale. He wants to help people. Jace has this kind of grand perspective. He wants to keep the whole multiverse safe, and so he swears to keep watch. Then we have Chandra. Um, Chandra does things because she's passionate about it, does things because she believes they're correct. She sees these people, these Zendikari, whose freedoms and lives are being taken from them. That is not fair. She understands that that's happening on other worlds. She knows that along with these other people, she can prevent that. So she is going to keep watch. And then finally we have Nyssa Ravain, and I think for her the biggest thing is that she saw all of the others come to her world to help her and how much that meant and all of these other worlds, there are other worlds, not just the people, she sees the worlds that are in danger. And if it wasn't for the gate watch coming to help her, her world would have probably been destroyed. So she will do the same for other people. So each of them take the oath for a different reason. I used to read the Justice League. And the Justice League, every time they would add a member, the, 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 the person who would join would like take an oath and vow that he would, you know, help out the Justice League and do whatever. Um, and I love the idea of that one of the iconic elements of a super team is people taking an oath, of vowing to do well. And so I said, what if we had the characters actually take an oath? We made cards that represented the oath and that each one of them was taking this oath because they're joining and making this team. So the oaths are constructed as legendary enchantments that show a pivotal moment in time when a planeswalker swears an oath that they will protect the multiverse. And to construct them in design, we gave them an enters the battlefield ability. So you got something up front for your enchantment, but the enchantment part of the card helps planeswalkers in particular. So they encourage you to get lots of planeswalkers together with the oaths themselves. Your planeswalkers enter with additional loyalty. It's really simple, but it's also open-ended. It works with all sorts of different planeswalkers. It allows some pretty cool combos where you get to an ultimate ability extra fast and kind of surprise your opponent with that. So I think all around this one's just a really simple, happy, pleasing card that a lot of players are going to have fun experimenting with. With the oaths in the set, um, one of the key things we wanted to make sure is that, again, it was encouraging a Planeswalker heavy deck, um, sort of the, the Super Friends decks they often get called, where, yeah, he, you're, there's a good reason to be playing a bunch of different Planeswalkers and trying to get them all to work together and synergize. And that really is the story that we're trying to tell in many ways. So the, the oaths are all supposed to be good effects, maybe not quite good enough that you're going to put them in your deck without Planeswalkers. Like, we, we don't want these just showing up all over the place if you're not even playing Planeswalkers. Um, so ultimately, it's it's very much tying into the theme of all of these these four Planeswalkers are banding together, um, putting themselves on the line, and trying to defeat the bad guys. We have said before that we are in a new era of magic storytelling, and in Oath of the Gatewatch, we really get to see that start to come to fruition. Oath of the Gatewatch is the continuation of the Battle for Zendikar story, and one of the things we're very conscious of doing these days is making sure that we're shouting the story from the rooftops, essentially. So another way we're giving our players access to the story is uh, through the art book, The Art of Magic the Gathering Zendikar, 
which uh, gives an overview of the story, not just of the Battle for Zendikar and Oath of the Gatewatch stories, but also the, the original Zendikar block. Um, and really gives a, also a deeper dive into the lore of the world. If you ever wanted to know what the good news they preach in Kabira is, or what a herda is, this is the, the resource for you. Um, and of course, it's chock full of incredibly awesome art in a way you've never seen it before. Huge on a page. We just want to make sure that no matter, no matter what kind of player you are, whether you're just a casual player, whether you are a Vorthos, whether you're, you're a Spike, that the story is coming through and that you connect to these characters and, and the kind of trials that they will have to overcome. We had a series of five pivotal events from the story that we wanted to tell. We wanted to tell this on the cards, not just through a player's guide. The card Rise of Kozilek is supposed to tell the story of Kozilek coming out and destroying everything. We started off with a card that would return to your hand when you cast a Kozilek. That didn't have quite the impact we were looking for, so we decided to say you can cast it for free. Again, that didn't have quite the impact we were looking for, so we upped the effect the second time. The second pivotal event, Retaliation by Obnixilis, uh, is seen on the card Remorseless Punishment. Uh, so this is an interesting one, because Obnixilis is usually a very, usually a very practical guy. Um, all he wanted, all he has wanted for the 5,000 or so years that he's been trapped on Zendikar was to get his Planeswalker Spark back and get out of here. That's all he has wanted. He's been making plans for centuries now. Um, and he has it. He has it. He gets his spark back. He takes advantage of what the Planeswalkers have done and he gets his spark back, but he doesn't leave. He realizes that uh, Nyssa almost ruined his plans, that Zendikar itself doesn't just deserve to be left behind, it deserves to be destroyed. And he is the one who helps Kozilek rise up. Um, so now, he, he could leave, but he doesn't. He wants to stay and he wants to torture the Planeswalkers in the little time that he has left, that Zendikar has left, just so they know what it's like. Call of the Gatewatch is uh, pivotal event number three, and that is the moment after the Planeswalkers break free of Obnixilis' prison. Um, Chandra has broken Nyssa, Jace, and Gideon out. Now they come uh, up onto the surface, and they left a demon's lair for something much, much worse. It's the brink of extinction for this planet. They see two rampaging Eldrazi Titans, millions of, or thousands, hundreds of spawn. Uh, the people have all fled or have been killed. Um, and in this moment, they could planeswalk away. To them, this is not the end of their lives. They could leave, but they don't. And in that moment, that's when Gideon turns to them and says, let's do something bigger. Let's do this, let's become the gate watch, and that's when they each take their oaths and they swear to protect the multiverse. Then we have the climactic moment of the Oath of the Gate Watch story, Zendikar's final stand. Uh, having made the decision to stay, the Planeswalkers, now the Gate Watch, uh, hash this new plan to not just trap Ulamog and Kozilek, but destroy them because they believe that's the only option left to them. Uh, now, wait, you might say. Isn't Ulamog indestructible? And I would say, well, yes, he is. But uh, that's why this is represented on two cards, Bonds of Mortality and Fall of the Titans. Uh, Bonds of Mortality represents Nyssa using the ley lines of the plane to bind the Titans, uh, and in fact, begin to draw them in, to manifest them physically. Uh, up to this point, they've been sort of projections from their etheric forms, and now they are actually pulling them in, seeing their full, horrible, gigantic forms uh, in a way that begins to crack the plane begins to destroy it, um, but uh, Chandra, being Chandra, makes a very risky move at the last minute and just channels a ton of fire into the Titan's physical forms, now made mortal, now bound to reality. Uh, that fire spreads uh, throughout their bodies, uh, both within and without Zendikar, and destroys them utterly. So pivotal event number five is Zendikar Resurgent, and that is the moment after the dust has settled. They just were victorious. They destroyed two Aldrazi Titans. They saved this world, what is left of this world. And for a moment, it's like everybody is holding their breath. Is there anything left? Did we do this in time? And then on the ground, the glyph that they used to bind the Titans starts to glow, and they see new life coming through. And that to them, to Nyssa, very specifically, means yes, Zendikar has a chance. This world can live. In the card's art, we see the Gatewatch looking out over the vista of Zendikar recovering and 
kind of contemplating their next move. Uh, what are the other threats they're going to face? There's still a third Eldrazi Titan out there somewhere. There's the question of Ugin's missing allies, Sorin and Nahiri, where are they? That's a question Jace is particularly interested in. Um, and there are other people to save. There are other planes in peril. Where will they go next? What will they do? We'll find out.